Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Time for another fun-filled episode of Combat Commentary. I am your gracious host, Turtle Sage, a.k.a. Richard. And on today's episode, we are going to talk about the power of moderation. And why are we going to talk about the power of moderation? Well, I'll tell you why. For one, I went to a magical place called Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah, I needed a vacation, and it was there for me. So, during that time there, saw a lot of interesting things. Mainly people gambling, um, engaging in all manner of different vices, ranging from substance abuse to enjoying the splendors of their own range of sexuality. It's neither here nor there. What I'm talking about is some of them, so I saw some folks a lot of times overindulge. And, 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 and my policy regarding drugs, I'm actually quite liberal about it because I, I see it as more of a disease and not as more of a crime. And, and, and you know, but at the same time, I choose not to partake mainly because of my lifestyle. You know, it really doesn't pay for me for drugs and alcohol to dominate my life. And the thing about it is one thing I noticed, like when, when I was there, I would have a drink or two, but not to the point where I couldn't function. I, I, like I didn't break out into basically animalistic behavior because I, it's, I don't have to. I don't, it, it's, that's not entertaining to me. Right. And so I would drink, but. I would also rest a lot, relax. I went to get a wonderful massage. If you're ever at Caesar's Palace, go to Qua uh, Spa and ask for Heather, lovely Filipino lady, great with her hands. Feel a lot looser. So yeah, I, it's that whole idea of balance. You know, if you're always, you know, numbing yourself you, you won't be able to fully enjoy life or deal with the bad parts of life it's, it's it's an escape and so there there's always a, a, a it's always about the overload and it, and it sounds yes very Taoist of me but in my case extremism this doesn't work on either end. And so we see that in the sense of people, like I saw a lot of 20 year olds who would be out, you know, wilding as they say. And you could spot the fact that they were 20 because of the way they acted. They didn't know how to handle themselves. Me, I could have a few drinks in me and you wouldn't know it half the time because I would just be chilling, lying in the cut. It's very quiet. And so, it's really just because I knew how to moderate myself. I would sleep, and I would eat a good meal, then I might have a few drinks, but not so much so that I couldn't function. Again, it's all about the functional part. And this will play a big part in what I'm talking about overall. You know, I balance myself out with the food and even when I would take a drink, I drink water. So I'd be detoxing myself while I'm toxifying myself. I know, counterproductive. But there you have it. I got to enjoy more of Vegas. And even while I was in Vegas, I at least did some Qigong. So, again, I got to enjoy it more than a lot of other people. So, with that said, this, this, is, this plays a part in martial art in the martial world overall as well like okay if you do external martial arts i.e any martial art for those who don't know that involves muscle bones and sinew sinew then i.e you know karate taekwondo boxing uh muay thai hungar uh sabat etc. This is you. And it's good to do when you're young. You're you're discovering what it means to fight. You're you're crawling. 
you're discovering pacing, timing, spacing, um, all of that, etc. But if you try to do that as time goes on excessively, your body will break down that much quicker. Just like if you do uh, a, a few lines of coke daily, you're going to open yourself up to a lot of health problems, mainly heart problems, you know? But I digress. Moderation is one of the greatest things you can have in this world. Now, I'm not saying you should never drink a, you know, a glass of scotch, but don't drink, don't finish off a fifth of um, Johnny Walker daily and hope to be a good martial artist, let alone a functioning human, right? Sometimes, if you, I mean, it's like the less you do it, the more you can enjoy it. It's, it's, it's a double-edged sword, ironically. If you are constantly, you know, going hard, for example, Bruce Lee was the king of excess. He could be described as a dragon that burned brightly, but quickly. It's like you know, for, for my barbecue fanatics, look, I'm from Texas. Sue me. Um, if you're from Texas, you like barbecue, whatever. Bigger fire means it's hotter, but it'll go out quicker. And that's basically more or less what happened to Bruce in many ways. He trained like eight hours a day. The most I've ever trained is like five hours. And even then, after that, I didn't want to do it for the next few days. On average, I might train one to two hours, give or take, depending on what I'm doing. Like if I'm doing Northern Shaolin and Ninjutsu, I would extend it a little bit more because there's just so much. Tai Chi, I probably work on like one thing, like, you know, some Qigong, maybe some empty hand, maybe some sword. But I could, ironically, if I do an internal art, i.e. an art that relies on the flow of energy, uh, neutralization, and using a, forces, using a person's force against them, I can actually do that longer because it takes less effort to be destructive. And because it takes less effort, you're not taxing yourself. It's the difference between having like a puff of a cigarette versus completing a, uh, a cigar in one drag. No one do that, right? So... This is why, if you notice, there's a lot of, uh, like, throughout my life, my martial life, I have seen people who do internal arts like Tai Chi, Tai Chi Chuan, Ba Gua Chang, Xing Yi Chun. They could be, like, 60 or 70 years old and ragdolling people. Usually me. <laughs> I want that ability. I want, hell, I want to be 90 years old. I want to live to be 90 to 100 years old. I mean, if I'm going to be that old... I want to still be able to function. And this is where moderation comes into play. So like, for example, let's say I do a hardcore workout of uh, my John Lawhorn and ninjutsu and I lift weights. Well, the next day, I don't really feel like lifting weights because my body's going to be all sore. I'm going to do qigong. I'm going to do silk rilling, some forms, because I'm going to be smoothing out the muscles. Like, okay, if you drop a pebble a j or a jagged rock, into the water, leave it there. Over time, the water is going to smooth it out uh, and dissolve it. But if you drop a jagged rock on another bu a bunch of jagged rocks, initially, you might chip the rock, but it's going to remain jagged. It's not going to, nothing's going to affect it, right? And so, on a grand scale, moderation works. I'll give you an example on a grand scale. Uh, the Roman military before, well, not even the Roman military, like, okay, uh, Skyrim, for my, for my people, for my gamer enthusiasts, Skyrim is one of my favorite video games of all time, and in that game, you can use uh, a collection of different races to, you choose one, and you build up a character that is the Dragonborn. Now, each race has their special gift, but there's one race in particular that has no special gifts, 
they are the king and queens of moderation. These are the Imperials. And ironically, the Imperials, who are based off of the Roman Empire, do not specialize in either magic, uh, melee combat, or thievery and stealth. They're kind of middle of the road. Because they're middle of the road, because they are not deficient in any area, they can more or less do anything. Jack of all trades, master of none. Now, initially, it'd be harder to level up, with the exception of money. They are good at getting money. It's just a little trick of the game. Imperial's luck. And that can help you. However, they don't specialize in any of the other traits like magic or fighting or whatever. So you've got to work extra hard just to build them up. But once you do build them up, well... There's a reason that the Empire runs everything. Best teamwork, and you've got somebody who's good at something. You can find a little bit of everything. In the internal world, well, in the martial world, if you do only one thing well, people are going to eventually figure, figure you out. You do a lot of things well, and over time, you build that up, but you exercise moderation in anything, eventually you're just going to be that much harder to beat, i.e. most Chinese martial arts done correctly. Shaolin monks are, are, are historically some of the most feared warriors of all time because they do just about everything well. Weapons, punching, kicking, grappling, they can do it all. Ninjutsu, similar but to a lesser degree, yeah. Okay, but even better, the martial arts, the Wudong-based martial arts, it's all about moderation. You have hard and soft. Too much hard, you're going to break. Too much soft, well, let's just say this. If you don't have any aggression, it's, it's harder to be that that much more destructive. So even in the essence of being soft, you need a little bit of hardness. You know, I can neutralize you and then hit you with the one inch punches if you've seen in many of my videos. So even within your life, don't tax yourself so much hoping to, you know, if you sharpen your blade too much, eventually it'll break. Likewise, if you clash your, your blade too much, i.e. Ex uh, uh, an excessive lifestyle, too much partying, too much of anything. You know, like, it, like the metaphor of a sword, you clash it too much and you don't use the soft redirecting measures like you would with a gin. Your blade will break. Your spear will break. Your, your uh, chain will break, etc. So just keep that in mind. Moderation instead of excess. Moderation always beats excess and specialization. So, with that said, I hope you learn from this. Oh, and if you don't believe me, here's one story that I would impart in closing. So, long time ago, when I was very young in the art of Tai Chi, we had a seminar. My school had a seminar, and the daughter of the grandmaster of our style, um, Feng Zhi, Grandmaster Feng Zhi Chang's daughter, Su Chen, came all the way from Beijing to, you know, show off what she knew. And she asked me, uh, a strapping lad, to punch her, hit her with a jab. So, okay. I'm, and I wasn't going to play around. I'm not going to mince words. Like, okay, fine. You want me to punch you? I punch you. I threw, you know, simple jab. She caught my jab and did a subtle wrist lock. She knew how to be soft, but she also has experienced force and had just enough to tip the scales. She didn't try to overpower me. She undermined me. She dropped me to one knee with so much pain it looks like I was asking for her hand in marriage and she let go and I'm just like rubbing my hand and I'm just thinking to myself, 
This 50 some odd year old Chinese lady just did this to me who barely came up to my chin. Yeah, that made me a believer. So I want to be uh, middle aged. Well, I'm 37 now. I want to be 67 or 77 and being able to do that to people. So I, I know what I need to do. Practice diligently, but not so much that I don't have a life. I can't enjoy life because I stress. Stress kills. <sighs> Moderation doesn't. Moderation. I'm thinking, I don't know. Oh, I'd like some of my older folks to weigh in. Moderation, I'm thinking, is the key to life. What say you? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, and subscribe if you like what you saw. And with that said, Turtle Sage, signing out. Be water, my friends.